If you've ever been tempted to do things up Beverly Hillbilly style and carry your mother-in-law on the roof, then stick around and check out my ShopMade solution. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of DP Shop Talk. And today we ventured outside of the shop to take a look at my material transportation rails for roof racks. Now I'm fortunate enough to have a great mother-in-law, so I've never needed to use this setup to take her somewhere, but if you're not so fortunate, then the option is there. Now what I do use these for is transporting lumber, molding, sheet goods, countertop, and even small projects. So I'll show you how they mount, I'll go through the design, and then I'll show them to you in action. So the rails themselves are just simply made of eight foot lengths of two by four, nothing special with that. Now what I've done is cut uh, notches in them to correspond with, with the bars on my roof racks so that they actually sit down and register right on them so they can't go anywhere. Now I took two uh, 5 16 by 5 inch uh, carriage bolts and drilled down through the 2x4 for those so they come on each side of uh, each of the roof rack bars. And then I took a, a galvanized steel plate, drilled the, uh, the plate out for the 5 16 bolts, and so that slips over the bolts and then is held on underneath with the uh, galvanized nuts. Now there's just enough flex in the steel plate that it gives a little bit of a spring action against the nuts, so it acts sort of like a lock washer to help keep the, uh, the nuts from ever backing off. So on the front of the rails I have four angle brackets mounted and those act as stops for the material being carried. So on the top surface I have two that come up vertically so that's for carrying sheet goods or any larger items on top of the rails. Now I have them mortised in to the top surface so that the screw heads and everything sit below the surface so that when you slide sheet goods on or anything else it doesn't scratch or mar it. Now for carrying things between the rails like lumber uh, I have two brackets mounted for that as well so you can put the rails closer together and uh, stack some lumber between the rails so then it's contained on the front and contained on the sides and everything gets strapped together. So I'll show you how I uh, load sheet goods up on the rails and I'll also show you some pictures of other things that I carry as well. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to load up sheet goods even by yourself by simply tilting it up on the back of the rails and sliding it forward. Now I use at least two ratcheting tie down straps uh, to secure things to the roof rails to keep them from shifting sideways or backwards. You want them nice and, and secure on there. Now I carry two or three sheets maximum on the roof depending on the thickness and, and the weight of the uh, the sheets that I'm carrying. Now you always need to make sure that you stay within the uh, the maximum weight rating for your roof racks for safety. One of the things I use the roof rails for the most is transporting molding and trim. I can easily carry full 16 foot lengths since the middle 8 feet is supported and you get 4 feet of overhang front and back. This actually works better than the back of a van or a pickup since you can evenly distribute the overhang front and back instead of having it all hanging out the back. For carrying narrower moldings, I screw some scraps on top of the rails as cross pieces to support the trim front, middle, and back. I use the rails to transport countertop and keep it fully supported, and I usually wrap it in a moving blanket to protect it and strap it down. Now sometimes I will use the rails to transport smaller projects that are too big to fit inside the car, but not really big enough to need a van. They also work well for transporting gear like my miter saw station when needed. 
So as you can see, the roof rails add a lot of extra capacity and versatility to any vehicle with roof racks. Now even if you're driving a larger vehicle like a van or a truck, it still adds a lot of extra capacity. If you have the back of your van packed with tools and you need to bring some extra materials along, this is a perfect solution. Now you might be wondering why I seem to use my car for a work vehicle. Now if you'd like to know the answer to that and see the efficient setup I have for packing all my tools in the back for a typical job, let me know in the comments below and I can make another episode on that. Now as tempting as it might be, make sure you never carry your mother-in-law or anyone else for that matter up on the roof. Definitely not a safe practice. Now, On the topic of safety, you need to be smart about what you carry up there and make sure it's well secured. I always keep my speed a little bit lower as well when I have something up top just to be on the safe side. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't seen the new website yet, make sure you check that out as well at danpatterson.com. It's got a brand new blog with lots of helpful content, a new online store to uh, purchase the MPT plans through, as well as a portfolio of my work. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you check that out and sign up for the free email newsletter as well while you're there to stay up to date with all the latest news and content. So thanks for watching, and until next time, let's talk shop. Mm -hmm.